Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this event. Thank you so much for being with us today for the presentation of the Thinkers Report on Soil, which is such an important topic for us and for future generations, and I'm very happy to welcome you here to it. It is a special presentation, as you're well aware of. Corona has made a lot of things impossible, but you should always look on the bright side of life, and there is still so much which is still possible. Getting new impulses, getting food for the brain, and that's what we'll nourish ourselves with today. And maybe with this extreme weather, it's actually a good thing that you can watch it, it all from home instead of having to go through the cold. So what do we have in store for you? We have three main things, which is, of course, the presentation of the report itself, which will be done by our two thinkers who wrote the report. Afterwards, we'll have time for questions, your questions, which you can send to us, and how that works, I will tell you later. And then afterwards, we'll have the policy makers, or at least their advisors, um, who will address us as well, the, the policy makers who are responsible for the soil in Flanders. Because that is actually what this thinkers report is all about. Be a guidance and an inspiration for their decision making. So that's what you can expect from us. And after we are done, you will know better what the condition is of the soil in Flanders and why good soil management is so vital. You will know better what the problems are with the soil in Flanders and what we can and should do about it. And very importantly, we will also know what our policymakers have learned from the report and plan to do about it. Now, before we get to the report itself, you might wonder why this thing is report and why on soil? Well, the best person to answer that question is Professor Dr. Elisabeth Monar. She is the president of the Royal Flemish Academy of Belgium for Science and the Arts. She's a scientist specialized in the technical sciences, and she was head of the class of technical sciences of the Academy when the Thinkers Report on Soil was initiated. And I welcome Professor Dr. Elisabeth Monar, not here on the stage, but she will join us from home. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to welcome you to the event on soil and natural capital. Next year, the Royal Flemish Academy of Belgium for Science and the Arts, the KVAB, celebrates the foundation by Empress Maria Theresia of the Academy in Brussels 250 years ago. The intention of the Empress was to banish ignorance and its consequences from her states and to prompt in her subjects that noble competition that causes genius to blossom and leads to useful enterprises and interesting discoveries. Already 200 years, 250 years ago, the social relevance of the academy was clearly evident. A lot has changed since but the societal interaction is still present. The KVAB, as an autonomous scientific cultural society, not only promotes science and the arts, the Flemish government also expects that the academy feeds the public debate on important societal challenges. For this, the KVAB offers a wide range of interdisciplinary programs for example, the Tinkers program, position papers, and reflection groups. Particularly through its Tinkers program, the KVAB aims to invite every year a few highly regarded scholars called Tinkers to come to Flanders to reflect on a particular challenge or region, region is currently facing. These thinkers are introduced to the specifics of the challenge by the members of a task force appointed by the Academy. They are given the opportunity to discuss the topic with opinion makers, politicians, university professors, industrial managers and other stakeholders. Throughout the process, 
the thinkers developed a specific appraisal and or evaluation of the situation in Flanders about the topic of concern. They have the full freedom to draft a set of recommendations, actions, confrontations, which are consolidated in a thinker's report that offers insight and guidance to the Flemish government. Each year, the Academy organizes two different cycles of the Tinkers program. In 2020, the class of technical sciences took the initiative of a Tinker cycle on soil and more specific on challenges and opportunities for preservation and strengthening soil as natural capital in the 21st century. Supported by a steering committee, shared by Professor Willy Verstraten and with Academy members, the general coordination was led by a core committee consisting of Professor Chris Verheyen, Professor Steven Sleutel, Professor Anne Gobin and Professor Eric Smolders. Today, the cycle closes with this public symposium. We are happy that both thinkers, Professor Richard Barkett and Mr. Sioke van Wensem, join us online to present their findings. It was a big surprise to see this morning in the newspaper paper a full page devoted to their final report, a proof of the societal relevance of this. The two ministers responsible for the domains concerned were asked to give their reflections on the Tinker's report. Due to an urgent current affair, both ministers are unexpectedly unable to attend this meeting. They are represented by their advisors. A warm welcome to Mr. Wouter Nachtergale, the representative of the Flemish Minister for Agriculture, Mrs. Hilde Krivitz, and also a warm welcome to Mr. Victor Dries, representative of the Flemish Minister for Environment, Mr. Suhal Dimir. Your presence online is much appreciated. On behalf of the board of the KVAB, I would like to express our sincere thanks to all persons who have contributed to the rollout of this socially important thinker cycle. First the thinkers, the share and members of the steering and core committee and all the stakeholders, and in particular to Mrs. Ines Dua, policy officer for having ensured that the entire process went so smoothly. I look forward to the presentation of the thinkers and the further debate. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dr. Elizabeth Monar. Normally, an applause would be in order now. I'll give one uh, for everyone, everybody who is uh, at home. Thank you so much for sharing with us where the thinkers program comes from and why the Academy decided to have one on soil. But how does it work, this Tinkers program on soil, practically? When, how did, does it start? When did it start? Where? With whom? Where did the Tinkers get their knowledge? The best one to answer those questions is Professor Chris Verheyen. He is a professor in forest ecology and management at Ghent University, and he is also head of the forest and nature lab there. And he is coordinating the Tinkers program on soil as part of the steering committee. He is here physically with us, so I welcome him on the stage. Please, uh, Professor Chris Verheyer, you have the word. Thank you very much, uh, Pascal, for the nice uh, welcome. Good. Um, as already introduced, um, I will say a few words on why we have a Thinkers program on soils. And I take you to this graph. I think many of you know this graph. This is a graph taken from the Planetary Boundaries Framework by Ruckström and others. And that clearly shows that we have grand challenges ahead with our society. These scholars, they figured that actually um, we're exceeding many of the planetary boundaries, exceeding many, many of these boundaries to keep our, our planet in a stable Holocene state. And if you look into these boundaries, we see climate change, we see biodiversity uh, loss, we see freshwater use, but if you look carefully, we don't see the soils. However, if you look very carefully, you will notice that soil is actually there. 
It plays a crucial role in no less than six out of nine of these planetary boundaries, so soil really is important. It's a very valuable natural capital that delivers a whole suite of key ecosystem services for our society, as is seen on this graph. However, there's also a big challenge there, because maintaining this natural capital and governing it in an appropriate way for the future is really challenging. Soil is kind of a particular uh, natural uh, capital because you can consider this, it as a common good in private hands. Indeed, soil is tied to the land. It's different than air, it's different than water. It's really tied to the land, often in private hands. And how can you manage such a valuable resource that has these properties? And therefore, uh, we wanted to know about soil as a natural capital in Flanders and the governance of this soil in Flanders. <clears throat> and if you look at, for instance, the Flemish co coalition agreement, you see that soil is mentioned several time, times, but is soil really considered as a natural capital, as a natural asset for the future in Flanders? And that's what we wanted to look into. And actually the idea came from uh, Willy Verstraten uh, from the Tinkers program, uh, from the Academy, who initiated the idea to start this um, Thinkers program. And then, uh, together with Ines, um, he asked me, in the first place, to help coordinating this, this program. But then we also invited actual soil scientists, Anne Gobain, Steven Sleutel and Eric Smolders, to uh, support this uh, thinking program as a steering committee. And then we were very lucky to be able uh, to have Richard Bargett and Joke van Wensen on board. Richard Bargett taking more the academic side of things, Joke van Wensen more the policy side of things. So those, the two thinkers in residence. And <clears throat> to develop this program, we did not skate on thin ice. Uh, it's cold these days, but that ice is not yet that thick that we can skate on it. But the Tinkers program there, uh, we really did our best to do it thoroughly. As you can see from this timeline, we started already two years ago by initial meetings within uh, the committee and also with other experts. And that led then ultimately to three fact-finding sessions. One on healthy soils, one on soils and climate change, and one on soil governance. And ultimately, this led into this report that we will present today and this uh, webinar. <clears throat> to show you in another slide that uh, this was thorough work, I can say that in total, 75 experts were consulted, coming from science, coming from policy, coming from practice, so from different fields, from different institutes, all across uh, Flanders. So we really think that we captured the essence here. And therefore, I'm very glad that today this report is there and that I now can give the floor to the two thinkers to present their key insights. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Chris Verheij, and for you as well, a round of applause uh, for taking us through the particulars of the uh, Thinkers program on soil. Now, indeed, we come to the most important question of today. What is the condition of the soil in Flanders? Uh, what are our challenges and what, are, um, what can be our solutions and what should we do? And the persons to answer those questions are indeed the two thinkers we have uh, with us today. The distinguished, distinguished scientist that the uh, Academy invited to dive into the Flemish soil, Professor, Professor Richard Bargett and uh, Joke van Wensen. But before I, will tell, uh, before I tell you a bit more about them, uh, I'll come back to the promise I made you uh, that you could uh, share your questions with us. Um, we are very happy to answer your questions. Uh, how can you get those to us? It's very easy. You can do it through the Q&A function of Zoom. And this is at the bottom of your screen. So you can just type in there your questions. They will come to us and you can do so while the thinkers present their report. And you have about 20 minutes to do so. So thank you for sharing your questions and also thank you for sharing our thinkers for welcoming our thinkers, I'm sorry. They're not physically here, unfortunately, uh, due to the corona restrictions, but they will talk to us from the UK and from the Netherlands. And our first thinker is indeed Professor Richard Bargett. He's a British ecologist and a professor at the uh, University of Manchester, 
and he used to be the president of the British Ecological Society. And as Professor Christopher Hayne already said, he will talk to us from the academic uh, perspective. And then afterwards, Joke van Wensen will cover the policy-oriented perspective because she is a specialist advisor of the Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Management in the Netherlands, and she vice chairs the Dutch Soil Science Society. Enough for me. I will gladly give the floor to Professor Richard Bargett and Joke van Mensen. Thank you. Thank you very much for that introduction. Um, I, I would just like to start by thanking the Academy for allowing us to actually write this report. It's been quite an experience under unusual circumstances, but people have been incredibly helpful. Everyone we've met has been incredibly helpful in terms of providing the information we need to produce this report. So it really acknowledges the contribution of many different people, not just our individual work. Could I have the next slide, please? Now, when I uh, was doing some research recently, looking at the history of our perspective on soil health, I stumbled across this quote from a Milton Whitney. And Milton was the chief United States Department of Agriculture Bureau of Soils. And he was a very eminent soil physicist. And one of the things he said in 1906 was that the soil is the one indestructible, immutable asset that the nation possesses. It is the one resource that cannot be exhausted, that cannot be used up. Now, as you'll see in the next slide, Milton was indeed a very capable scientist, but he couldn't be more wrong. This was a report that was written in 2050, produced by the United Nations, and it estimated that 33% of soils on Earth are moderately to highly degraded, and around 25 to 40 billion tonnes of topsoil, fertile topsoil, are lost every year. And the key thing to mention here is that soil is a non-renewable resource. It takes literally thousands of years to form, but through inappropriate management, it can be lost rapidly. Next slide, please. Now, in reckoning of this and also other policies, there have been growing calls to protect soils and manage them sustainability. Across the world, in many different scenarios, this is an increasing call and recognition of the importance of soils is beginning to increase. And as we can see on the next slide, sustainable soil management is increasingly being recognised as being key to actually delivering many of the sustainable development goals. And I just wanted to say a few words about what we mean by sustainable soil management. And I think these are key to the report in that soils provide multiple ecosystem services that are essential for those sustainable development goals. They're essential for climate mitigation, water security, land restoration, human health, food security and biodiversity. But I think a key point is that management for one of those services can have positive effects on others, but it can also have negative effects. And one of the problems that we've faced over the last few decades or 50, 60 years is that management has been very much focused on single ecosystem services. So if we focus just on food production, there'll be trade-offs, for example, in terms of carbon. But sustainable soil management is very much about managing for multiple functions. It's rec recognizing that soils do lots of different things that underpin not just food production, but also underpin climate change, water security, etc. But also that it is a long term perspective. To manage soils, you need to do this using a long term perspective. Now, if you can move on to the next slide, I want to now say a bit about what we actually found. Now, I don't have too long, so I'd urge you to actually look at the report for the details. But what I want to do is just highlight four key findings. And then I just want to say a little bit of detail about the actual soil threats, which we discovered, which are particularly important for Flanders. Now, the first thing I should actually say is that whoever we spoke to, there was universal concern that soil health is deteriorating. And there are many drivers of this, and we document them in the report, but the key ones seem to be soil sealing, intensive agriculture and climate change, and also a risk of novel diffuse pollutants. In some cases, unknown pollutants like plastics, et cetera, and antibiotics. 
I think another key finding of the report is that this or these problems are actually compounded by a lack of an overarching policy to protect soil health. And I would say that this isn't unique to Flanders. This is also occurring in many different countries across Europe and around the world in that there aren't overarching policies to protect soil health. A key thing about Flanders, however, is that there are planning and tenure systems that obstruct a longer term vision of soil health. Another key thing that we found is that there's a lack of a holistic monitoring scheme for soils. So we don't actually know the current status of soils and we're not able to track how they change or how interventions will impact on soils. And then finally, there was actually a lack of information, we would say, on things like biological diversity of soils and the multifunctionality of those soils and on their resilience to climate change. Now, I just want to move on now to the next slide where I'm just gonna say a few words about those key threats. And as I said, many of the threats that I'm gonna talk about are not unique to Flanders. These are threats which are occurring across the entirety of Europe. But some of these are occurring in certain situations more than perhaps they are elsewhere. And I think one of those threats that really came out to us in this report, pretty much every meeting we had, everyone we spoke to, was the sealing of soil. Now, as a soil scientist, soil sealing couldn't be anything worse. It takes land out of agriculture, it suffocates the soil, and it increases problems like surface runoff, flooding, and also the urban heat island. Now, Flanders, I would say, is quite unique in that it's a soil sealing hotspot. A large proportion of the land surface is sealed, and the rate of land take is at six hectares per day, about half of which is sealing the material with impervious material. And some of the soils that have been taken out by sealing are of high fertility or natural capital. Now, if things don't change, estimates suggest that up to 40 to 50% of Flanders could be settlement by 2050. And I think the key thing that we emphasize in this report is that we recognize that there's a vision by the spatial policy plan to cut land take by half by 2025 and to zero by 2040. But to achieve this will require immediate action. Next slide, please. Another threat, which again is universal to many parts of Europe and particularly in Northern Europe, is soil erosion. About 7.2% of land in Flanders is at risk of erosion. But I think a key point here is that with climate change and land use change, soils are becoming increasingly vulnerable. Now we recognize that soil erosion regulation is actually quite well developed in Flanders, but it does need to be adapted to climate change. Things like floods, things like extreme water rainfall events. Soil compaction is a related problem. A high proportion of Flemish agricultural soils are actually vulnerable to compaction or compression, particularly in the subsoil, which has negative impacts on crop yields and also leads to increased erosion. A key point here that we recognized is that the actual contracts or land uses are forced under contracts to harvest crops and till crops at bad timing, in relation to the processing industry, which is something we might talk about later. If you could pass to the next slide, please. Soil pollution, this is another problem. It's a historic problem in Flanders, nitrogen sulfur deposition, which is again a problem across the entirety of Europe, but there are also localized sources. But a key thing that we emphasize here is that there is a need for an improved monitoring system and it needs to be revised to detect trends in novel pollutants, things like microplastics, antibiotics and PFAS. And then to the next slide, please. And then I guess an issue which overarches all of this and actually compounds these problems and is strongly related to land use change is change in climate. And this, as in other parts of the world, poses a significant risk. But one of the things we noted in relation to Flanders is that there are no reliable data that we are aware of on carbon contents in soils, which is key to mitigation across different land uses. There is some evidence that carbon concentrations are declining, but this is only from a snapshot of sites over a relatively short period of time. The other thing that we recognize in terms of risk is that these problems are just going to get bigger. 
in that there's winter rainfall is expected to increase, heavy rainfall events, droughts, etc. So there's really an urgent need to actually take on board and put in place strategies to build resilience of soils to climate change, but also to increase their contribution to climate mitigation, therefore meeting mitigation targets. Now, the last slide I want to finish you with, because all that was pretty much bad news. I just want to finish with uh, a, a, a sort of more positive message. And I guess just stressing that many of those problems are not unique to Flanders. They're problems faced by many different countries. But I think there is an opportunity. And this is something that we certainly picked up from talking to different people in Flanders, is that through a new innovative framework that considers soils holistically in terms of the different functions they provide, there is real potential for a change in the way that soils are managed in Flanders, managing them for multifunctionality, managing them for climate mitigation and resilience, protecting soil carbon hotspots, for example, improved spatial planning to incorporate desealing and green space in climate mitigation. And then at the top of all that, the need for a monitoring scheme to actually assess the status of soil and how effective these interventions are. So there is, I would say, much potential in terms of changing the way we manage the soils. And this is hopefully reflected in the recommendations that we make. And on that note, I'll pass over to Yoka. Thank you very much. I had to switch on my microphone. Thank you, Richard, for this uh, wonderful uh, start of the presentation of the report. And I also thank all the people involved in this think Thinkers programme for their uh, help and uh, the, 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 well, the overwhelming amount of information we have gotten from everybody to uh, support our report. Um, in my slide, I very briefly summarize what Richard already has been saying. Soils in Flanders, uh, the urgency summarized. There are many risks, soil health risk. The soil quality, you might say, is still under threat by erosion, diffuse pollution, agricultural practices and uh, soil sealing. So the availability of healthy soils, if you consider so a healthy soil as a natural capital, uh, providing these many ecosystem services, you need a lot of these soils to do the things you want them to do for, uh, for, for the people in Flanders. So the availability of healthy soil is decreasing due to building activities and the quality of the soils that we still have in Flanders is decreasing. So there are a lot of challenges um, and you may say uh, you, you want to keep these ecosystem services that are by definition beneficial for the people and healthy soils are also needed to combat climate change, as Richard just told us. Next slide, please. Um, and Flanders is in that not alone. There is a, a worldwide problem with soils. Richard already said that. And there are many, many uh, international activities that uh, are, uh, uh, are calling for action to do something about the soil quality and, um, and the amount of uh, healthy soils. Mm -hmm. So we have the... Uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals, uh, on which, one of which you see on the right side of my slide, uh, the goal number 15, which is about life on land and has a lot of activities concerning soils. We have the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, which is not uh, directed not directly involving soils, but we need soils to, to combat climate change. Um, we need healthy soils to combat climate change. We have the EU Green Deal. Uh, I will say more about it uh, after this slide. We have the Intergovernment Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, who also, all, also say that we need healthy soils to uh, sustain biodiversity and to sustain these climate services. And we have the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which, well, it's a long list and there are a lot more. Um, so it's obvious that everybody thinks we need to do something about soils. Can I have the next slide? Uh, for instance, the European Green Deal, which has, uh, has been launched uh, very recently, 
uh, that has a lot of goals, but under the goal preserving and restoring ecosystems and biodiversity, the EU lists uh, the following in the Green Deal. There should be a biodiversity strategy, but it addresses soil and land degradation in a comprehensive way. We need to achieve land degradation neutrality in 2030, which is only in nine years. Uh, so I, well, I can't see it for, for my eyes uh, how to do that in nine years, but uh, so it's a very ambitious goal. Uh, we need to protect soil fertility, to reduce erosion and sealing, to increase organic matter, identifying and remediating contaminated sites, restoring degraded soils, defining their good ecological status and improving monitoring. The European Commission is already working on it. Can I have the next slide? And um, a thing that we have discussed in the, in the Thinkers program is then uh, if you say we need healthy soils, you need to know what is a healthy soil. Uh, so you need indicators for that. And that, of course, connects with the monitoring program that already has been uh, uh, addressed. And um, to be honest, there is a lot to say about what is our proper indicators for soil health. Um, for So for the purpose of today and to avoid any discussion, uh, I just say, well, the European Commission in the Horizon Europe uh, mission on soil health of, and food, they proposed a simple set of six fundamental indicators. And well, if you have a good look at them, they are not very simple, but the, and you, uh, you can read them out. Uh, those six are on average the ones you need to say something about healthy soils. but. It's not, of course, that um, having these indicators and monitoring these indicators is, of course, not enough. But you also need to know what is good and what is bad. So you need to distinguish, and you need some kind of reference values, which might differ for might be different for different soils and different regions. So that you have to establish. And then after that, you need to know what to do if your reference value is not met. So um, it's, um, well, it's, it's a lot of work to come to a code monitoring set. And there are promising developments in Flanders, but it still needs to be uh, done and needs to be launched. Um, more specifically for soils in Flanders, it's the ceiling. It's the fragmentation in ownership and in the lease of agricultural land. It's also fragmentation in governance for soils. There are many, we have met many institutes and uh, different research groups and uh, the, the policy for soils is spread over uh, the, the policies that uh, that connect to soils are, uh, are many different ones. So uh, there is no overarching uh, approach. There is a lack of monitoring, uh, the lack of thresholds and subsequent actions, and there is also a poor awareness of the value of soils, especially in suburban areas. So uh, many scientists think, or at least I have discussions with them about the fact that we sometimes tend to think that a soil is lost uh, as soon as, as it is in an urban area. But it's not. It's very important. Maybe it's crucially important to deliver these ecosystem services that are also needed in urban areas. And therefore, I'm very pleased to see that there is the Blue Deal in, uh, in Flanders. And to coming back to this poor awareness of the value of soils, I understood that uh, there is a new program, uh, a new uh, chapter in the Curieuse Neusen program which is going to measure in soils and that uh, many more people applied for having this uh, this this um, measuring uh, uh, toolkit uh, than there are available. So uh, and the fact that today uh, uh, the newspaper uh, addressed this issue uh, might point out differently. But of course, we are all in our own, uh, own soil bubble. Um, having said this, we have drafted six recommendations, and um, 
The first recommendation is a, a really important one saying that um, that it is really necessary that we, and with we I mean everybody, but also the government and the authorities, that it's important to consider all soils, whether they are in, in towns or in urban areas or in uh, agricultural land or in nature areas, that all, all soils should be considered as a common good. And that common good provides well-being for everybody, in Flanders in this case, and thereby you can oblige every landowner from farmer to hobby farm to household gardener to value and to take care of the soils beneath their feet. So, and there is an opportunity to use legislatures, leg legislative options and incentives to reward farmers and other land users to do so. And, um, and in connection to that, it's, it's, Essentially, it's necessary to raise awareness among all sectors in the society to do something about uh, soil natural capital. Um, the second recommendation is that to develop a holistic soil monitoring program. We already said a lot about that, so I will go to the next slide. Um, well, this, this one is, um, uh, there is a lot already said about it, but at a, so it's kind of open door, but we in Flanders, really the open land and soils need to be protected uh, from, uh, from, from sealing by using more compact build, building and bundling of infrastructure and to ensure full consideration of the soil natural capital within planning decisions. And um, Recently, there was a new spatial policy plan uh, uh, published, uh, which does not unfortunately apply to all land that is still destined to be built uh, uh, in the future. So we think it's really necessary that this new spatial policy plan should apply to all land, uh, all still in use building land, and that finances should be made available for municipality to deal with the planschade. Uh, people from Flanders know what I mean. And you, in the end, to reach this goal, uh, no uh, zero ceiling in 2040, it might be necessary to have a de-sealing program for compensation if you really have to build new buildings and infrastructure. Um, the next recommendation is about uh, improving um, agricultural practices and uh, I, in the recommendation it said circular agriculture, kringloop, landbouw, but you can also think about biological, organic or all kind of sustainable agriculture uh, rural practices and thereby limiting uh, management practices in agriculture that damage soil natural capital. And um, we think it's necessary to have some kind of compensation scheme that if farmers or other landowners do something beneficial for, uh, uh, do something for the whole society on their farmland or on, on their land that they should be, uh, they, they can be compensated for that. And also it's necessary to adopt longer and better lease contracts. May I have the next slide, please? Um, well, this one is about uh, climate resilience of soils, that it is necessary to, to protect and increase the climate resilience of soils and, uh, and contribute to the climate mitigation through protecting and building soil organic carbon and maintaining healthy and biodiverse soils. And there is plenty of uh, knowledge how to do that. And in the end, we thought it would be good to have a committee on integrated soil policy involving different governmental organizations, scientists and stakeholders concerned with soil health. And uh, they could proactively cooperate with and profit from international efforts to combat land degradation, climate change and biodiversity loss. May I have the next slide? And this is my final one, and I thank you all also on behalf of Richard for your attention. And we both 
acknowledge all the people who have helped us to uh, to write this report. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Joke van Benson, and uh, of course, Richard Bargett as well. And of course, you're staying online because I'm sure that lots of things uh, which you have said already has answered uh, many questions already. But we have some more questions for you and uh, answers uh, which will be given as well by the scientists present here uh, with me. Um, I'll uh, introduce them uh, to you as well. Uh, next to me is Dr. Uh, Anne Gobain from uh, Vito, and she's an agricultural engineer with extensive expertise in the agri-environmental modeling in how climate impacts the soil crop atmosphere continuum and in forming farming systems and land use dynamics. Thank you for joining us. And uh, next to her is uh, Professor Steven Slotel from Ghent University, and he's a prof professor in management of organic matter in terrestrial agro-ecosystems. The next 20 minutes are uh, devoted to your questions. Uh, we will pose the questions to the thinkers in the UK and in the Netherlands and to the scientists who, join, who are joined here with me. So our first question is to you, uh, Richard. Can I, can, I, can I call you Richard? You can. Um, why do you claim... Um, let me, why do you claim that longer land lease contracts should be adopted? Our leases are at least nine years and stay long in the hands of families. So why should they be longer, the lease contracts? I think the, um, well, thank, thank you very much for the question. Um, the, 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 when I was talking about them, I was talking in relation to what we learned about shorter term contracts. And maybe my colleagues in Flanders might be able to contribute to this in that we, we were aware of contracts from the actual processing industries who would actually require that crops, for example, were harvested at a uh, short time scale. So, for example, that would lead to potentially people harvesting crops when soils were wet, which could lead to soil compaction. So the, when I was referring it to then, I was mainly referring in relation to the contracts of the actual processing industry. But also my understanding is that shorter leasing of contracts um, was also quite widely done. And again, my colleagues in uh, on the panel in, actually in uh, uh, Brussels might be able to comment on that. But my understanding is that there were shorter term contracts and that those shorter term contracts perhaps don't come with such an obligation for the longer term management of soil. But also if there were incentives to manage soils differently, to actually build carbon, for example, they wouldn't necessarily be compatible because it takes a much longer timescale to achieve that. Okay, so thank you. This question. Thank you very much, uh, Richard. I have uh, a next question uh, coming from you uh, all uh, at home uh, to uh, Joke. Um, after all these talks and presentations, how could we better organize our soil governance structures in Flanders? Big question, I think. <laughs> yes, that's a very big question. And uh, of course, uh, who, who am I to answer that question? Um, but I think we already said that uh, a dedicated committee on uh, uh, integrated soil policy would be very helpful. And more cooperation. Well. I already got the uh, impression that uh, the science groups are, are working a lot together and they are also working with stakeholders, but there is no overarching authority to say something about soils and to bring this to the government. We learned that uh, there is no uh, yearly reporting on the status of soils. That would be very helpful if there, there was something like that. Okay, good, that's a start. Um... Just uh, a quick, quick message to the audience at home that you're very welcome, even though I said that you only had time to uh, send us your questions while the thinkers were giving their uh, presentation, you can still do so now. So please, please, anything you can uh, think of which you want to know about soil, please send your question. I have another question. I have another question for uh, one of the scientists here uh, who, who's uh, joined me here, to Stephen. Um, how would a suitable soil monitoring network look like? Are there good examples abroad? Well, at this moment, um, a good soil monitoring net network, there is an initiative uh, in Flanders, and that is uh, mainly looking at 
keeping track of carbon stocks, keeping track of uh, soil bulk density changes, changes in pH, and uh, also some nutrients like nitrogen. So that's already a start, of course. But we cannot, uh, we cannot know what is happening, for instance, with subsoil compaction from this network, or we might not be able to uh, understand what is happening with soil biological diversity in time. So it is not holistic. It's really targeted for the time being at storing carbon in soils. So, we, so if you really want to uh, understand what is happening with soils in Flanders, we will need more than that. We will need to have a more holistic system. The good thing about the current initiative from our government is, is that it is a harmonized system across all land uses, which is important because in Flanders we have a lot of land uses. It's been told that there's been a lot of conversion from grassland to cropland, from cropland uh, towards urban land. So it is good that we are looking for a hararmonized way, and uh, I think that at least uh, this is a start, but I hope that we can develop it further. And are there examples abroad, for instance? Are there countries which can uh, provide examples? Well, we, there are, of course, uh, systems abroad, but I have to say many of them are also initiated quite incident incidentally, so they are not well harmonized across systems across land uses, and that is a, a problem which I think we can tackle here in Flanders, at least now, because our late start has the advantage that we could learn at least from some of the problems abroad. Yeah. We do not have a system solely for agricultural land. It is, it is more balanced, I believe. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, Anne, um, I have a question for you too. Mm -hmm. um, what is the future for sugar beet and potato on our Flemish soil, given the in increasing drought spells and heat waves? Well, thank you very much for that uh, overwhelming question. <laughs> <laughs> um, indeed, our crops are suffering. I mean, we've been having drought spells, not just drought spells, but longer term droughts and reoccurring droughts for several years now in a row. So that got us very much thinking about adaptation and adaptation measures. Um, we've talked a little bit about carbon. That's one side of the story when we're talking about climate measures. That talks about mitigation. When we're talking about the water cycle, we're talking about adaptation. And but it's the two together that actually go hand in hand when we talk about climate measures. Now, for farmers to, comp or to install or to think about climate measures to be implemented on their fields, it's very, very important that they get the right incentive, of course, to do so. Uh, of course, they are triggered by the number of droughts that we've already had. So in that sense, they are very much in aware of what's going on and they are looking for solutions themselves already now. So they're looking for increasing carbon uh, because, of course, that brings about a better soil structure. It increases also the infiltration into the soil, which is very important if you want to bridge that uh, sort of dry spell. But, of course, it cannot solve everything. In the shorter term, farmers are, are looking very much at irrigation, but it has to happen with the right water, because if we're, if we're, um, if we're experiencing a longer drought period, then of course uh, governors and, and, and government will say, well, there is a, um, a captation. Um, uh, well, it's actually, well, I'm now uh, thinking of the Dutch word, but in fact, what, the, what they forbid to do is that farmers will, would uh, extract water from the surface waters and use that for irrigation. So that's forbidden during that period. So they turn their heads towards alternative water sources, but then water quality comes into play as well. So we really need to look not just at the short term, but also at the much longer term, looking after that soil, making sure that that soil can actually capture that water for much longer, and then we're talking about climate measures, not just farmers, but also uh, land managers. Um, at the landscape level as well, we can do our effort. But now there is a second part of that question. Can sugar beet survive? Can potatoes survive? Well, some of these crops are long term on the field, so they span a long period. I mean, they're planted typically uh, around April, come off the fields, end of September, October, and so on. So ecologically, they do have a power to sort of, well, if there is a bad weather event, to revive, as it were. But not always for the best, because it does affect the quality of that crop. So we need, really need to rethink about what to do uh, about, about these, these uh, 
uh, not just about these crops, but how we crop them and how we want the yields to, to improve and at the same time look after our soils. Now, there is a very last remark I want to say to this, and that is, well, if you want farmers to be involved in, in implementing climate measures on their fields, there has to be a business model behind it, because otherwise it will not happen. Yes, that, that's what I was wondering. Uh, maybe the farmers, because they're, they, they, they notice every day the, the, the impact of the climate change, um, maybe the far farmers know already that they should change, but maybe they need support from the government? Absolutely. Will it come? Maybe that's a question for uh, one of the uh, thinkers in the UK and in the Netherlands. How easy can governments be on board? Uh, I, I, can, I can add a, um, a little bit. I think, I, I mean, to me, there are probably three measures that need to be implemented in order to actually lead to action. I think one of them first is just simply increasing awareness of the importance of soils and the actual natural capital that it provides. Not just awareness in government, but awareness within the general public. And then I think absolutely, as Anne says, there needs to be incentives. The bottom line is, you know, that these things won't happen unless they are part of a farm business or other economic models. And my understanding is in that some parts, I think in the UK, they're talking now about payments for carbon, for example, or payments for improved soil fertility. But the problem there comes that it is actually a very long term process carbon accumulation. I mean, you, we were talking about long, short term, 10 years before. It takes decades to accumulate carbon and carbon doesn't always actually increase. So it needs a lot of thought about how you actually uh, reward farmers for putting in place management practices. I think another final thing I would say as well is the importance of demonstrations. So if there are demonstrations of where sustainable management brings benefits for carbon, but also brings increased resilience against climate change, for example, and in some cases, things like diversification can actually lead to increased yields in the long term. These demonstrations, I think, can also serve to encourage government and also to encourage farmers to adopt these practices. But at the bottom line is it requires incentives in order for people to take on board these actions. Okay, I think uh, this uh, next question which I have here, uh, also addressed to you, Richard, um, is a bit about the same thing. Should we reward farmers on the basis of the ecosystem services? And how should we do it with incentives? Well, personally, I, my own personal view is I think you should, yes. I think that, um, you know, as I said at the beginning, a key tenant, if you like, of sustainable soil management is that soils don't just provide one function. They provide a broad range of functions which are of a common good. So if they're a common good, there should be incentives to enable management in a way which brings benefits across the board. So absolutely, I mean, incentives are absolutely key to implementing these measures. And I guess the only people who can provide those incentives are the actual government. Well, maybe I may uh, add something to that because uh, farmers are, are strongly regulated, so to say, or at least they get incentives by the European Commission. So we have this common agriculture pol policy, which is partly uh, based on incentives. If you do something that, for instance, you keep uh, old grassland, you uh, are getting, uh, in, there are incentives to keep old grassland, not to, to turn it over in, uh, in uh, arable soils, etc. So, and uh, the, the other big party in, uh, in, in this whole uh, discussion about incentives are uh, the, the banks. The, the ones providing uh, money and loans for uh, farmers and um, um, and the market uh, parties, of course, the, 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 as you said, the contractors who uh, um, who are um, the, the, the bigger companies who are uh, leasing the land or uh, uh, with whom the farmer has a contract to provide to 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 deliver uh, groceries and uh, to deliver vegetables. So um, um, 
saying that the government needs to provide incentives is uh, is maybe a bit too simple because there are many other parties involving in involved in uh, what the farmer is doing what he's, he or she is doing so uh, it's 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 more complicated than uh, saying the government needs to do something <laughs> okay good oh sorry thanks uh, Joke, for uh, stressing indeed that it's uh, a sim it's not a simple uh, topic which doesn't have a simple solution, but which needs work from everybody. Um, I have another question for you, uh, addressed to you. Um, should we adopt the Dutch uh, KPI of soil quality in Flanders? And how would that work in practice? <laughs> um, I think... Um, you can look at how uh, things are working in the Netherlands and uh, take the best out of that and, and apply that to Flanders. I, I'm not going to say that you should do that uh, because maybe the situation in Flanders is different. Uh, maybe there's less or more money. Uh, maybe some parties are involved or not. So I'm, I'm sorry, I've been working too long in uh, the, the, the policy arena to say uh, very black and white answers. I don't think uh, just learn from each other. That would be my uh, uh, that would be my uh, advice. OK, good advice. Um, I have uh, uh, one last question. Uh, to uh, Richard or Joke, um, could you comment on the agroecology as a framework for multi-functional Fun soil protection? Yeah, I, I can comment on that. And, and it, it also relates to, to what we were just talking about, because there is increasing evidence that, for example, diversification practices within farm systems, so mixing your crops, intercropping, rotations, uh, cover crops, etc., actually brings benefits for biodiversity, nutrient cycling, water regulation, soil structure, etc. And it doesn't always compromise yields in the longer term. So there is increasing evidence, I think scientific evidence, that this can work. Um, it obviously requires changes in, in farm practices, etc., uh, which may or may not be uh, possible, but there is evidence that it can actually work. And I guess the other thing I would just add that um, one thing I'm becoming sort of aware of is, is, is also that we talked about incentives, but there's also the, the power of community-based actions, because increasingly, I mean, certainly in the UK, there are cooperatives of farmers forming who are practicing some of these diversification practices at a farm scale and within fields and seeing the benefits. And this is starting to attract more attention from farmers in the area. And the same thing would apply in an urban area where if people see the benefits from community action um, for different services, they're more likely to become engaged. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for your uh, answers and thank you also uh, for your questions, uh, the people at home. Um, I've heard words like immediate action and everyone uh, says we need to do things about soil and there's a lot of work uh, which needs to be done. So we now know what the condition of the soils are in, uh, soil is in Flanders and we know what the challenges are and they're very big, uh, I have understood. We know how we should tackle them. The question now is, have the people in charge heard all these findings of our thinkers, and what will they do with the findings? And we sent the report to the two ministers in the Flemish government who are in charge of soil. Um, these ministers have, uh, are uh, Hilde Krovitz and the Flemish minister, is the Flemish minister for agriculture, and the other minister is Sual Demir, the Flemish minister for environment. Um, they were supposed to join us here today, as we uh, heard from Elizabeth Monar at the beginning, but they've excused themselves. But we are very fortunate because they sent us their ad ad advisors. Sorry about that. They sent us their advisors, and their advisors are the ones, after all, who advise the ministers. So I'm very happy to have the advisors join us. Let me see if I have the first one, the advisor of Hilde Krovitz, Wouter Nachtigal. I think I see him on the screen now. Yes, okay. Yes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Nachtigal, for being uh, with us. And so, have you heard what the findings are of the thinkers and what shall the minister do about it? 
Yes, uh, thank you very much. I hope all can hear me well, so, uh, loud and clear. Um, I have to say, yeah, but as was uh, said by Ms. Manar, uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, Minister Krivitz uh, could not make it this evening. Uh, she asked me to replace her a bit last minute and underline to bring her speech as literal as possible, which I will do. I will happy. I will be happy to do. But the only thing is that whenever I say I, during the speech, one should imagine that it's not me, but it's the minister who's talking. So that's that's the, the only caveat, if I, if I may say so. So therefore, the, off we go to the speech. Uh, dear scientists, poli policymakers and other participants, I'm very grateful to give me that you give me the opportunity today to uh, reflect on your soil report soil as natural capital written in collaboration with several national and, and national and international uh, experts for all life on earth a healthy soil is just as important as clean water and clean air a healthy soil however is much more than avoiding pollution the ecosystem services that soil provide are very diverse diverse just consider the fact that three times more carbon is stored in soil worldwide than in the atmosphere. And let us not forget the ability to, uh, of soil to retain water and nutrients uh, and the enormous wealth of living organisms that soil harbors. In light of the challenges, challenges we face, uh, such, a climate, uh, such as climate change, it's extremely important that we protect our soils and keep them in optimal condition. I will briefly go in, in detail on some of the policy actions uh, on Flemish soils we already took and we will be taking uh, in the near future. First of all, it is my firm belief that a digital revolution is the basis for soil knowledge and soil care. The digitization uh, is one of the spearheads of the Flemish government. The amount of data at our disposal today is immense uh, as are the tools to handle these data. We must take full advantage of that. In addition to traditional soil analysis, we have sensors on tractors, soil scans, drones and satellite images. Um, the question is now is how we can use this information in an intelligent way to monitor agricultural soils and detect pro problems in order to tackle them in a targeted manner. There are many steps to be taken, but first of all, we need to make it possible for data to connect and to be exchangeable. Uh, the data pl platform Just Connect that our research institute uh, ILVO is developing is an indispensable link for data exchange uh, in the architectural in the agricultural sector uh, and opens the door for the development of a wide range of applications. A good example of this is the soil passport that my Department of Agriculture and Fisheries is developing together with ILVO. Um, the intention is that oil, all soil related information from agricultural parcels can be consulted easily and clearly by farmers so that the evolution in soil quality becomes more visible. Second, um, the engine of good soil quality is soil organic carbon. Um, I think it was mentioned uh, a few times by previous speakers. Uh, maintaining a high level of soil organic carbon is not only crucial, crucial for soil uh, fertility and crop production, it also makes the soil more, more resistant to extreme circumstances such as drought and erosive rains. Moreover, Maintaining and increasing soil carbon is indispensable for climate mitigation. We need up-to-date figures on the evolution of carbon in our, so in our soils. Uh, this is not only necessary for uh, international climate reporting, but also, but also for a good, targeted and effective policy uh, and to provide more insight. That's why the Flemish government is developing a carbon monitoring network and a possible remuneration uh, for efforts of uh, farmers that increase the carbon soil content. I'm convinced that we need to work in a knowledge-driven way so that insights from research and from individual farmers can be introduced to the broader group of farmers. One way to do, uh, of doing this is by focusing on awareness raising and advice. 
but also by giving farmers financial incentives. And I thought, and I think that point was also uh, stressed uh, by previous speakers. Um, the European uh, Common Agricultural Policy is crucial in this respect. That's my third point. Uh, policies that directly address the farmer are important, but we must keep in mind that farmers do not work in isolation. They always work in a broader socio-economic context. Measures must therefore be feasible within the daily farm management. Four, work together. Collaborations with all levels of society will be necessary. As Minister, I'm committed to facilitate the right synergies for this. Uh, we, we must create win-win situations so that the objectives of the European Green Deal, the Farm to Fork strategy and the biodiversity strategy, which we fully support, are achieved in a way that uh, also benefits the, that it also benefits the farmers uh, and the food industry. For this, we will create the right synergies between policy, research and innovation, the agricultural sector, food industry and consumers. Consumers, for example, are looking for more balanced and more balanced and climate friendly diets. This presents opportunities for greater diversification of crops and innovations for the food sector. And my fifth and last point, agricultural soils can also play an important role in the circular economy. How can we use organic residual uh, flows as much as possible to improve agricultural soils? In this regard, I would like to refer to the Flemish Action Plan on Food Loss and Biomass Flows of 2021 to 2025 and the Bioeconomy Policy Plan. I'm pleased that my Department of Agriculture and Fisheries and ILVO uh, are taking the lead in bringing the necessary players together to remove legal bottlenecks and to provide the scientific basis for using biomass flows as soil improvers. Ladies and gentlemen, for a long time, soil has been a matter of soil scientists alone, probably too long. Knowledge is cru crucial, but we need the whole of the society to put that knowledge into practice. Everyone has a role to play. Together we can make our soil thrive. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, uh, Wouter Nachtegaal, for voicing the ideas and plans of uh, the minister, Hilde Krivitz. It was as, as if she was here with us today. Thank you so much. Um, I would uh, very much like to pass the word to the advisor of uh, the Minister of Environment, who is Zual Demir. I'm not sure if he's online already. Mr. Victor Dries. Are you Hello, there? good evening. Yes, you're actually all surrounded by soil and nature. Welcome, welcome. Um, yeah, so thank you. I'll ask the same question uh, to you. Has the minister heard the findings of the thinkers? And what shall we um, shall yes. she do about it? You have the word. Sorry. Yes, uh, thank you. We've heard uh, the findings of uh, the thinkers. And just like Wouter did, I would also like to apologize my minister who uh, got a message earlier today that she was called to an urgent meeting where she had to attend. So uh, I have the honor of uh, joining you and I will try to, uh, to read the speech of the minister as well as possible, of course. Um, having heard the thinkers in residence and this evening's discussion, we can only confirm the importance of healthy soils and the need for a sustainable management of our natural capital, our soil resources. Flanders, as you know, faces a variety of challenges, such as biodiversity loss, climate change, including drought and flooding and they are all strongly connected with soil. As we heard this evening, soils provide a multitude of services and therefore play a very important role in sustaining humanity. Healthy soils form the base for biomass production, including our daily food. They are at the heart of a diverse nature, filter and store water and store carbon. So our soils play an important role in climate mitigation and climate adaptation. But still, we often take soil's role in our daily life too much for granted. Soil is increasingly under pressure. To halt and reverse this trend, the Flemish government fully committed itself to keep the soil quality at a good level. The government agreement acknowledges the importance of healthy soils as the basis of our food supply and of a diverse and resilient ecosystem. But we must face the challenges and act accordingly Flanders is a densely populated region, 
as the thinkers also have mentioned in their report, land take at present is over five hectares a day. We are committed to create a framework for a building shift that will reduce the pressure on the open space. We are working hard to shape and operationalize this framework in 2021, so this year. The target is clear, no net land take in Flanders by 2040. Last year, we endorsed the first de-sealing projects to also practice this in practice. This year, we will accelerate and consolidate this initiative within the framework of the recently launched Blue Deal. Soils in Flanders are in general very fertile. However, soil quality has decreased in many farmers' fields due to highly intensive agriculture. Carbon content has decreased, erosion rates often are still too high, compaction hinders water and nutrient transport, and many fields have too much phosphorus. The government agreement states that over the next 10 years, our soils in Flanders are not to suffer a net loss of carbon. This will result in a win-win for soil quality and climate adaptation and climate mitigation. Agricultural soils with a higher carbon content are healthier and more resilient to climate impact. In order to achieve the no net loss, we must improve soil quality by strongly reducing the carbon loss from agricultural soils. In addition, we have already started several initiatives to significantly increase the area of forest, nature and wetlands. We launched a forest, a forest expansion plan with the aim of 4,000 hectares additional forest by 2024. The Blue Deal to combat drought and water scarcity will restore wetlands. Finally, we will raise awareness among local authorities and citizens regarding carbon-friendly management of gardens and parks. Therefore, we also engaged in the recently launched citizen science project, Curieuse Neusen in the Turn, that was already mentioned also earlier. To capitalize on all those efforts within the climate objectives, we will soon have a soil carbon monitoring network up and running to follow up on the evolution of soil carbon stocks. The setup of this network was underpinned by solid scientific research in cooperation between the academic world, Flemish scientific institutes and our administrations. Flanders has had an erosion policy for over 15 years. This has resulted in several small-scale erosion control measures. The situation has improved. The erosion risk has decreased and several known local problems have really been solved. However, not all fields are managed yet sustainably. There is still a large area of agricultural land where the risk of erosion is too high. Furthermore, there are still problems with muddy floods and too much soil is flowing into our water cars courses. Add to this the predicted impact of climate change on rain intensity, and it becomes clear that we must raise the, raise the ambition level. Therefore, we will evaluate the current erosion policy in 2021 and adjust it where needed. We wish to strengthen the focus on appropriate source-oriented measures to make the soils resilient to erosion. This should be good for the soil and for the quality of the surface water and saves on the costs of clearing the water courses. We will align the erosion policy as much as possible with the river basin management plans and take the polluter pace principle as a guiding principle. Flanders has a long-standing tradition in soil remediation and we remain committed to the target of at least starting the remediation of all historical soil pollution by 2036. Remediation enables reuse of black fields, thus enabling a circular use of these sites and contributing to the no net land take target. Furthermore, we want to limit the exposure to diffuse contamination. Our policy should have a solid scientific base. There is a high demand for recent soil data. Therefore, soil data and information was, must be made available as open data for research, modeling and policy making. Historical data are already available and new data owned by administrations, research institutes and scientists start to find their way to the DOV soil database. When shaping a future soil protection policy, we will take into account the advice of the thinkers, for which I thank them, together with European guidelines to come. 
we will need to overcome the present fragmentation and coordinate the protection and monitoring of our soil natural capital. The principle of considering soil as a common good, making every landowner and every land user responsible to take care of the soil could be a very interesting line of thought to protect and restore soil health and to limit management practices that damage soil natural capital. To conclude, we all depend on our terrestri terrestrial ecosystems for our well-being and soil is, as, is at the very core of this terrestrial ecosystem. So we should keep our soils as healthy as possible. Furthermore, we are all committed to the sustainable development goals with land degradation neutrality as the baseline. Therefore, we will loyally contribute to the restart of the European Soil Protection Policy, where an update of the European Soil Thematic Strategy is scheduled for this year. In name of my minister, I would like to thank the Academy, the thinkers, Jorke and Richard, and all the scientists and civil servants who contributed to this very interesting and relevant program on soils as a natural capital. Indeed, the interest in soils is increasing, and this thinkers program has provided and summarized very valuable information and insights, useful, useful for future policy development. With the increasing awareness of the key role of healthy soils in addressing major societal challenges, we think there is a momentum to show political leadership and to start paving the way to land degradation neutrality. I thank you. Thank you so thank much. You so much. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Victor Gris, for voicing the plans and words of uh, Minister Zual Demir. Um, we will undoubtedly take you or them up on all the promises they both uh, made here. Um, I heard words like extremely important, uh, healthy soil is needed for humanity. Uh, they want to raise the ambition level and they're very uh, keen to follow the advice of the thinkers, which they thanked. Thank you, thank you. So we've had all that I promised you. We know what the condition of the soil is in Flanders. We know what the soil in Flanders needs mostly if you want to keep it healthy, and sustainable and if you want to clam tackle climate change. And we learned what the policymakers will do with the findings of our thinkers. All this will also be put in a book, in a publication in the series of the position papers of the Academy and it will be available both in English and in Dutch. So you have the thinkers report online and you can read and reread um, everything on paper in a publication which you can hold, which is very good news, I think. Now, what do we still need today? I think someone who will sum up the afternoon and two years' work, which has led to the Thinker's Report on Soil as a Natural Capital. And for that, I invite Professor Willy Verstraten to the stand. He is an authority in the fields of processes and applications of microorganisms in soil, drinking water, waste, biofuel, water treatment and fermentation, and he is a member of the class of technical sciences of the Academy. As for me, I would like to thank you all for uh, following this from behind your screens at home. It's a different experience than being here united in the same place, but it is what it is. And I thank you for that and for your participation today. It was a pleasure being your host. And maybe next time, who knows, we'll all see each other in person. The final word of today on soil as a natural capital is for Professor Willy Verstraten. Thank you, Pascal. Ladies and gentlemen, you are still there, I hope. Uh, you were 250 a minute ago, so I, I rush so that you don't uh, have to run away. No, 250, it's really marvelous. The uh, attention that we got over the period has been uh, uh, depicted by Chris, but all over there was a great interest, and today we were very much surprised uh, the, uh, of all your, your enthusiasm to have this day, be it as it was, uh, as Pascal has said. I will be very, very, very brief. I say the following. What are the major findings? Well, we found through our encounters with the public that there is a very broad and vivid interest for soils in Flanders um, 
through many levels of Flemish stakeholders. However, we must admit soil pollution, exploitive agricultural practices, soil sealing, they are not or were not in the mind of the general public so far. Uh, of course, there are many other things that occupy people, but this is what occupies us and we have to bring it to the public. That's clear. That's what you have heard. We also found that there is very much need for an in, uh, integrated action in Flanders to deal with our soils. Our soils as a valuable common asset. In the West Flanders, I speak for one minute, some Dutch, uh, I think, they say, Bo gronde, die maken ze niet meer bij. Uh, and that's, that's true, you don't make it. So we, what we have, we have, it was all said, already said by Richard, we have to take very good care of it. Um, we have depicted some actions of critical importance. Creation of a holistic soil monitoring program. And it has uh, the representatives, uh, actually the ministers have said, yes, we do that. Um, instruments for incentivating long-term stewardship. Long-term stewardship means that we really believe that, you, that it takes a generation to make a good soil and that it uh, can, in a few years, the soil goes, can, can be destroyed. So that stewardship somewhere, somehow, should be reflected in some reconsiderations of what we call in Dutch the pachtwet. It's not simple, but it is well worth that we give it some attention if we cannot embed this stewardship in this pachtwet. We also have encountered many suggestions that people who do well with the soil for certain practices, that they should be rewarded to restore, for instance, soil health. And in the West Flanders, or Flanders as a whole, there is the concept prijzij. The fact, the oude kracht in the Netherlands ook. Uh, the fact that if, if a farmer really takes care and he sells his soils uh, and his land, that he then could get an extra, so that there could be an incentive somewhere, somehow, even for short practices and even if he is uh, not owner of the soil. And then we... Uh, also think that there might be a visionary legislative platform to prevent further soil seal sealing, we have heard it all the time, uh, actually rethinking or upgrading here, uh, a few elements of the West plan. I think this is something that we heard many, many times. Far from simple, but I think throughout what we have experienced, there is the volonté, there is the will to do something about that. The good news, well, we have the EU Green Deal. We talked about it already, and that means that for the very first time, carbon is somewhere in the picture. Carbon was all, water and air was there, but soil and so carbon was not there. Now it is there somewhere, and, and we also learned that it can really be very essential in terms of the overall uh, uh, climate change abatement. Um, there is also a growing interest in soils and their significance in the return to the commons, the common good. Very difficult, but it is somewhere. And certainly these days when we go and walk around uh, in the outside, we feel the importance of the common, the common goods. Our soils are, in, uh, are essential for the well-being of each and all of us, certainly in times of corona. And then soils are becoming part, and that is special, of the education in our schools. We can hope that for the next generation, soils will be more than, quote, unquote, more than square meters. It will be integrated into the educational system. And that is very important and very positive also, I think. What next to finish? Well, it's all about communication, education, exchange of views, and then slowly but surely and with a lot of wisdom and comparison with other countries, create some improvements in the legislation. We here at the Academy, we try to bring this, we, to be part, to stir up that action, and so we will 
publish our Stampunten, that means the text will be available in English and in uh, Flemish. We also like to communicate all about this further through scientific journals and conferences, uh, different types of publications. I think the wisdom that we brought together here should not and will not stay here. It is already part of international publications, I should say. And then, of course, there is that absolute need to encourage and support schools, organizations, various stakeholders, policymakers to think further along the lines that we have discussed, to think about the value of soils, which is not ephemeral and uh, should not be uh, in the corner of our mind. No, it should be up in front of us as we experience these days more than ever before. I come to my very last slide, but that should be a very long one, and I've made it therefore very short. A major word of thanks and appreciation to dot, 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 dot. That means all of you 250 there, and all of you here, and those people in the cabinet, and the ministers who were so uh, nice to uh, welcome us for discussing with them, and who certainly will do all their best and all what they can to implement the wisdom that we all together gathered today. Thank you very much, and I can say for those who are here, have a safe trip home. Thank you. <laughs>